So we'll begin, as we always do, with uh, President Biden's schedule. We'll put it on up there. At 2 o'clock, he met with the president of Ukraine. Putin's causing a lot of trouble in Ukraine, so that wasn't a useless meeting. And then at 4.30, he did something that, you know, nobody knows what that is. A very light schedule, as usual, for uh, Mr. Biden. Um, now, reaction to uh, his speech yesterday. So as you know, we had Senator Joseph Lieberman on the broadcast, and I thought the senator was very honest. And he said, you know, Joe Biden is not the man that he used to be. And Lieberman knows him very well. I thought that was the most important part of the interview. Lieberman obviously disagrees with uh, the Biden administration in almost every aspect of the Afghan situation. Um, but the liberal press is trying to get away from it, as I told you. Exception is the Washington Post, a couple of days ago, put it on up on the screen. They editorialized, editorialized, as security worsened in the wake of the horrific terrorist attack at the airport last Thursday, and as U.S. troops prepared for their own departure on Monday, time and space ran out for these people. This is a moral disaster. He's talking about the people left behind in Afghanistan. One attributable not to actions of military and diplomatic personnel in Kabul, who have been courageous and professional in the face of deadly dangers, but to mistakes strategic and tactical by Mr. Biden and his administration, unquote, from the editorial. Now, that is uh, absolutely true. But you must think back about the Washington Post's um, coverage of the presidential race last year. The same editorial board said this, quote, the Democratic nominee, former Vice President Joe Biden, is exceptionally well qualified by character and experience to meet the daunting challenges that the nation will face over the coming four years. So you could make a case the Washington Post and other liberal media are responsible for this moral disaster partially responsible, right? And then there's the TV media. I'm only going to run one soundbite because you know it. You know what's happening there. This is from CNN. Go. You're hearing a lot of Republicans who are outraged over President Biden's handling of the exit, especially in the so-called Freedom Caucus. Yet they support the former guy, the one who set all of this in motion in the first place. The hypocrisy is off the charts, and it is sickening. Okay, so Donald Trump had nothing to do with the evacuation of Afghanistan. Yeah, he made a deal with the Taliban, but it was a different deal than Biden had. But that guy, I mean, he said, oh, no, no, Trump, Trump did all this. It was Trump's fault. Now, we've heard that time and time again over the last two weeks. But I just want to tell you, that was last night. It's it, this is the mantra, okay? It's nothing to do with Trump. This evacuation was totally the Biden administration, 100 percent. Now, it's very interesting that the New York Times, even more militant and more pro-Biden than the Washington Post, never said a word in the last two weeks, not a word, no editorial, no anything. Silence. Now, why? Why is that? Because the New York Times knows that 85 percent of its readership loves Biden voted for Biden. So this is a money play. It's the same thing that cable TV is into. We make our money from the right. So we're going to say stuff that the right wants to hear. Same thing correspondingly on the left. But a newspaper, the nation's quote unquote most prestigious newspaper, doesn't say a word on its editorial page about the Afghan disaster. The corruption has, has, has now reached such a level, I, I, it's unprecedented in this country. I'll have Bernie Goldberg on tomorrow to talk about it. Hey, I'm sure you've noticed that everything is getting more expensive. And with all this printing money and spending by the progressives, I'm concerned the dollar's end could be near. If the government continues this way, the dollar could freefall and lose its coveted role as the world's reserve currency. That's why there's never been a more important time to consider gold and silver to protect you and your family. 
And American Hartford Gold is the only company I'm happy to put my name behind. I have done business with them myself. It just takes a quick phone call and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA. Plus, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you and they'll give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. Call 866-501-5201, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201 or text Bill to 65532. Bill O'Reilly here. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you subscribe to the First TV YouTube page. Just hit the big red subscribe button below and you'll get clips and highlights of my program, The No Spin News, every single day. We'll see you soon.